Hello everyone and peace of Christ to all of you. Please invite your friends. And today we will have some time to think a little bit, uh, let us say, uh, to try to take the rust away from our brain. Because obviously many of us don't want to use their brain. Today's topic is, as you see, if, if Allah, and this is the Muslim saying that, as you know, we don't believe in Allah and we don't believe he exists. But if Allah knows the future, why does he test us? Actually, this is a very good question. Uh, but let us see how the Muslim answer it. I mean, the video is very short and it's very good, you know, to have a short video because this short video which is less than a minute or a minute and something is enough to make us sure that Islam is nothing but a joke. So this person, uh, Sheikh Mufti, he said that he was in, you know, somewhere and uh, an, an atheist asked him, well, if Allah, he know us, he know our future, why he test us? What the point? If he knew what I would do anyway. The question was, if Allah knew that we are going to heaven and hell, and if Allah has determined the whole future, why did he make us? Why didn't he just put us where we were belonging in the first place? So I told him, I said, when you have a court case, is it fair for the judge to just say, right, I'm jailing you without proving you or to you the evidence? You did this, you did that, you did this. Look at what you did. The evidence is against you. You now deserve this. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala did not impose on us certain matters. He has given us a choice regarding you are sitting here. It until now what he is saying, there's nothing wrong with that. You know, until now what he is saying, there's nothing wrong with it in theory. In theory. But this is absolutely not what Islam teach. And actually he in a, in a few seconds more, he will show you that he destroyed Islam himself. So until now, okay, well, shouldn't this God he give you, let us say, okay, he knew the future. Okay, so why he will judge you before you commit the crime? That's not fair. But you know, if you remember, we go and we check the Quran, we will find how a child was a slaughter and he was a child of a Muslim family because in the future, maybe he will, do something bad. Do you remember? Hmm. The logic he said to us is very clear. Well, shouldn't you commit a crime first so we can judge you for the crime? Perfect. In chapter 18, verse number 74, there's a prophet of Allah who Allah, he sent Moses, prophet Moses to learn from him, which means he is higher than Moses in knowledge. And when Moses was walking with this man who his name is Al-Khudr, this man, he saw a boy, and here it says young man, it's a boy actually, it's a child, you know, they lie in translation. Change the translator, you will find different new, new Quran. Just a change in the translator, it's a new Quran. Amazing. Hmm. See, it's a boy. And the other one, it's a young man. Okay. Then they both proceed till they met a boy. He, Al Khadr, he killed him. Musa said to him, Have you killed an innocent person who had killed none? Musa said he could not understand why he's doing that. Very, you have committed a thing which is munkar, bad, evil. Then Al Khadr said to him, which means that Moses is an idiot, he said to him, Don't I tell you, you will not have patience with me. You are just a kid. Then they continue their journey, and then Al Khadr, after he did what he did, he explained to the idiot, in this case, Moses, the Muslim Moses, he was an idiot according to the story. He told him as and as for the boy, 
his parents were believers and we fear lest he should oppress them by rebellion and disbelief. What we heard uh, Mufti Munik saying, is it fair that Allah will judge you before you commit a, mur a murder? Is it, is it fair that Allah, he will send you to hell and punish you before you commit the crime? Here you notice that the first thing about Islam and Muslims who claim to have knowledge, they are inconsistent and ignorant in their religion. You see, the, the child did not do anything. He's just a boy. His parents were believers and we feared. We feared. Feared. Well, shouldn't he commit the crime first? So in the answer in the video, he says, well, it's not fair. You should commit the crime. I mean, but this doesn't match with the Quran. Especially here, the parents are Muslims, which means the child is born of a Muslim family, which means he's a Muslim. So why you are killing him? Just because you fear? Here you notice right away that those who claim to have knowledge, they are ignorant. They do not know what they are talking about and we can get them busted in two seconds. We did not even start the video. So the first idea, which I agree with it, why God want to judge you for uh, before you commit the crime, you know? But this is not what Islam teach. That's a lie. Then he continue speaking, and then he start making the big ones. You know, the problem is, when Muslim, they start, the more they talk, the more things get horrible. And this is the problem of Muhammad, not only the problem of those sheikhs. Muhammad, if he keep his mouth shut, there is many things hard to explain about Islam if he could keep his mouth shut, but Muhammad, he cannot keep his mouth shut. So let us hear what this Muslim will say after. It was in the knowledge of Allah. It was decreed by Allah indeed, but he gave you the capacity and the choice. Hmm? He just said it's decreed by Allah. What? It was decreed by Allah and he gave you the choice. <laughs> I mean, have you ever heard of such a thing? The crimes you do, it was decreed by Allah. And yet he claimed that he gave you the choice. But you just said he decreed by Allah. Is that the hashish influence? Is that the cocaine? What are you taking, man? It's decreed by Allah, and Allah give you a choice. You the capacity and the choice, subhanallah. He will not punish, decreed by Allah indeed, but he gave you the capacity and the choice, <laughs> subhanallah. He will not punish you for what you did not have a choice regarding. Uh -huh. If something happened beyond your choice, yeah. say for example, something disastrous happened, you were driving according to the speed limits and suddenly someone decided to break the limits or to, they made a mistake, they bumped into you and you were injured. You are not going to be asked, why were you injured? That man is going to be asked, why were you driving recklessly? So that was not in your capacity. It's qadr. It taqdeer meaning, it is destiny. It Look at this stupid. It was destined that I was going to go through this indeed. I it was destiny. So, uh, 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 okay. So now we have two people have accident. Two people, they have accident. And Allah made a destiny that those two, they will hit each other. <laughs> so how you are going to ask the guy why you drive bad if you are the one who made them hit each other? Allah, brother, will not ask you because you are the one who get injured. Allah will ask the other person, Allah. But, but you just said it's a decreed.
which mean both of them, they are victims of the game of Allah. Allah playing games. Allah bring two people and he put them in a certain circumstances. So they have, they, they will have an accident. And then Allah will judge the other person for causing you to be injured. But you who is injured, it was a decree for you. It was a decree for the other one. The second you say it was a decree for the first one, or let's say the one who was injured, that means it's a decree for both. <laughs> oh boy. Oh, when I say stupidity is amazing, I mean it. Let us go to the hadith. You see, he said, it's not fair to be judged if you don't commit a crime. You have Allah will give you a chance to commit a crime. This is a hadith where Aisha and Muhammad they went to a funeral of a child, an infant. So Aisha she said to Muhammad, "Well, you know this uh, this child he will be from the birds of heaven. You know, he will be like little bird in the heaven. He's a child. He'd commit no crime. He's going to heaven for sure." Muhammad he said to her, "Don't be stupid, Aisha." <laughs> Allah decreed who will go to heaven and who will go to hell while people are not created yet. Where they are in the backbone of their father. You see the translation here says the loins. It says the backbone of their fathers. So Allah, he decree where people who will go, hell or to heaven. Allah, he created people of hell and he created people of heaven before they were created, which means he decide where people will go before they were created. So when Aisha, she said to him that this child, he will go, he, he did not commit sin. He did no sin, as you see, and this is all is sahih. Muhammad, he said to her, that is not true. He commits sin or not, it doesn't matter. He might go to hell. It might be the otherwise. Why it might be the otherwise? Because Allah, he created for paradise who are fit for it while they were in their father backbone. And he created to hell who fit for it while they are in their backbone the backbone of their father, which is a stupid to say the backbone anyway. But the Muslim here, they're trying to cover it, saying loins. So he created them for hell while they were yet in their father backbone. What Aisha, she is assuming that this child, he will go to heaven for he commit no sin and he did not even reach the age of sin. So why, why there's an option even to go to hell? You know what I mean? Is it true they have obligation to commit sin? Uh, yeah, you see, obligation is not obligation. It's like it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a decree. As an example, when somebody committed adultery, is it you who choose to commit adultery according to Islam? No. Absolutely not. Read carefully. This is Muhammad is talking and this is Sahih Hadith. As you see, this is not my words. Muhammad said, not me, Verily Allah has fixed the very portion of adultery which a man will indulge in and which he of necessity, do you see the word, he of necessity must commit. So, you don't choose to do adultery, you are forced to. It's necessity. It is not you who decide to go and sleep with that woman or that woman, or you are women sleeping with that man or this man. It was Allah who forced you, he wrote in your destiny that you will do this. So why you want to punish them for adultery if you are the one who wrote the very fixed portion 
of adultery which a man will indulge in. A woman she called the Sheikh in TV and she said to him, I became over 30 and I am afraid that nobody will marry me. As you know, in the Middle East, they marry only very young girls. He said to her, uh, my sister in Allah, don't worry. The Prophet, peace be upon him, he said, it is written in every woman private part the names of those who is going to do boom, boom to her. It is written there. And let me find the hadith. Now please maintain your language. Even we are reading something bad. <clears throat> So the woman, she is worried that who is going to sleep with her, you know? Maybe she will not get married. Uh, and and because this hadith, by the way, I mean, it's embarrassing. Uh, the Muslims, they will say to you, oh, I don't accept it. You know? Yeah. Uh, but let us see. And you know, the funny thing about the Mohammedan, like they write things about their prophet themselves, then we read it, then after we read it, they deny it. <laughs> you know what I mean? I mean, you are the one who collected the book. All right. Uh, let us see. I hope this website is working. Mm. Okay, I found the website, but it's not opening. Let us see again. Well, I found that, uh, you know, this is a book, actually. Really, this is a very dirty book, actually. Islamic book. Uh, this is the book here. It's called Al-Rawd uh, Al-Atir Fi Nuzhat al khatir This is a very, very dirty book. You know, I will give you the link. Because I cannot translate in the screen to, to English what is there because it's really, really, really filthy. All right. Those who speak Arabic, they can see. All right. I will go first to where it says the hadith here. وَكُلُّ فَرْجٍ مَكْتُوبٌ عَلَيْهِ إِسْمُ نَاكِهِهِ حُبَّ مَنْ حَبُّ etc. So it's written in every, in every female the names of those who are going to do boom boom to with the f-word all right but uh, i will give the link but be careful this is not a link you know you open in front of uh, you know if you have kids around you to read it uh, i will click let me first copy the link oh the link is in arabic the title i need to shorten it all right let, let me do the shorten it first again warning this is very dirty very, very dirty. Very, 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 very dirty. Um, shorten links. All right. 
Okay, we will pause the link for you now. I did shorten the link. You can open it. And you can download, actually, I think the, the book is available to read online in many, uh, you know, you can just search for the title if you speak Arabic. Now, if we go here, and I click translate to English. Uh, you know, the Google translation is not accurate. This is the, this is the word for the male private part. And the word here is a translation is very, very funny too. It's simply, he's praising Allah for giving women breast and giving the man a private part. So he put that in this and he know, and you, I mean, description. Yeah. Like when you do it and you, when you are, you know, boom, boom and holding the chest and sucking, you know, the soft lips and putting your strong uh, private part in, you know, you know. You know what I'm talking. <laughs> I'm not going to go further. That we will stop here. <laughs> Alhamdulillah. 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 <laughs> so anyway, <clears throat> uh, so as you see here, even adultery is something you don't even choose. So what those people are talking about? Muhammad he said that Allah he wrote. The destiny of everything until the judgment day. I heard Messenger of Allah saying, What should I write? Allah created, Allah created uh, his creation supposedly, and he created a pen. Allah have a pen. And then he said to it, write to the pen. The pen, he said, write what? Allah said, write what was decree about everything till the last hour comes. You know? So even before he created everything, everything is written in the book of Allah. And Allah, he decides where you will go. Now, this is, is not enough to prove to Muslims our, our point. We showed you the, the, the story of the child. We showed you like the child, he might go still to hell. And we showed you that adultery is not a choice. Uh, uh, and we are showing you now that Allah, he wrote a decree for everything. But let us go and give more proofs. All of us, we knew the story of Adam that he commits sin and the Muslims, they have similar story as in the Bible, which is a story from the Bible anyway. But Muhammad, he added his own spice to the story as usual. So according to Muhammad, there was a debate between Moses and uh, Adam. Now, how this debate happened, that you can ask Muhammad, because as we know that Adam and Moses, they never met. But Muhammad, he have his stories. Don't ask. Adam and Moses held a disputation. So they have a dispute. Moses said, Adam, you are our father, and you deprived us and caused us to come out of paradise. And then Adam said to him, so Moses obviously is accusing Adam that because of you, we are here in this earth. Otherwise, we should be in heaven. Because of you, Adam, we are here. Adam said to Moses, you are Moses. Allah chose you for his speech and wrote the Torah for you with his hands. Do you blame me? for doing a deed which Allah had decreed that I should do for, should I do 40 years before he created me so what the answer of uh, Adam are you blaming me Moses do you blame me for doing deeds which Allah he decreed for me 
40 years before my creation. What does that mean? That means that Adam, he have no choice to commit his sin or not. It's obvious, isn't it? In fact, the plan for him to commit sin was written 40 years before Allah, he created him. And the funny that the one who is saying that is Muhammad, because Muhammad in different place, he says something totally getting him busted with this one. Because if we go to the Hadith, we will find Mimi saying the following. Just to show you how to connect things together. Muhammad, he said, if not Eve, no woman betray her husband. Correct? I think the story in front of us, Muslim, they cannot deny it. And this is Sahih al-Bukhari. You cannot say, uh, this is not true. And the one is talking is Mimi himself. So Prophet Mimi, he said, where it is not, for Bani Israel, meat would not decay. So the, the reason we have refrigerator because of the Jews. They are the one reason to make, <coughs> make the meat decay. And it we are not for Eve, no woman will betray her husband. So according to Muhammad, Eve, she betray her husband. Correct? And then after that, all Eves, they follow their mother. They are bad. Muhammad saying all women are bad. And this is to con contradict all what Muhammad, you know, Muhammad, he claimed uh, that's, you know, you, you, you have no sin, you have no, nothing with the, the sin of your father. Muhammad, he claimed that Allah, he punished every soul by its own sin. But now we're claiming that the inherited sin from Eve, that is stupid. Because you just said the opposite. Same time, as long Adam, he just said that Allah, he wrote his sin 40 years before he created him. And Muhammad, he agree with Adam. Not only he report what Adam said, Muhammad, he gave his opinion in this debate. He said, so Adam got a better, the, the better of Musa's in argument. And he repeat that three times as usual. So Muhammad, he agree with Adam against what Musa said, that you cannot blame Adam for the sin he committed because Allah, he decreed for him 40 years before his creation. So the other hadith saying that if there is no Eve, no woman betray her husband is what? I believe that both hadith was written under the influence of drugs. As we knew that Muhammad and his companion used to be too much drugs to the point there's a verse in the Quran saying, don't get close to the prayer when you are drunk. Because the Arab, they were making fun of Muhammad and his companions. They are a bunch of a drunky junkie who go to pray and they start fading apart. So the prophet, he starts saying, Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. And this is why there's many hadith, Muhammad is skipping verses in the Quran because obviously he's drunk. Who who you believe approach not the salat, the prayer, when you are drunken? If you go read the hadith, I mean the interpretation, you will find that the Muslims agree that the Muslims used to fade apart and the Arab used to make fun of them. So how you agree with Adam that he commits sin, not of his choice, 40 years of before he created him. And then how I agree that Adam was kicked out of heaven. I mean, where is justice? And then how you accuse Eve that she betrayed her husband. It, this is the, the decree of Allah. Do you see what I'm talking about, guys? Because who is the criminal here? If Adam, it was a sin, he have to do 40 years before he is created. This is the plan. 
That's mean Eve, she did not do betray her husband. If she is a victim herself, this is the plan of Allah. Do we understand what I'm saying? And then if we continue. So here we go. We found that Adam, even Adam's sin is not a true. Adam's sin was a fraud from Allah. Was what? Fraud from Allah. And we can keep going. There is tons of hadith and reference as an example. <clears throat> how we go to heaven Muslim they say to you if you believe in Islam and you pray five times and you do jihad against the Jews and the Christians and the, and the, the Indian the Hindus the, the Buddhas the atheists whatever you go to heaven Allah Akbar Alhamdulillah Muhammad he said it doesn't matter what you do it's a decree Allah he decree for you where you will go before he created you when you were a sperm and here he quote for you saying well a person of you he will be almost almost in the door of heaven an arm distance from the heaven and then what is written his destiny Let us read together and excuse my English if it's broken, but we have a Islamic glue, we'll fix it. Muhammad he said, by him, Muhammad swear by Allah, beside whom there is no God, that one amongst you act like people of deserving paradise, until between him and the paradise there is a remain but a distance of a cubit. Almost like there's, almost like, you know, you have 90 centimeter between you, you know, two foot, three foot between you and the door of the heaven. That's it, you are there. When suddenly, when suddenly, the writing of destiny overcome him and he began to act like the dissonance of hell and he enter hell. Look what the heck. So the poor Abdul, he was making a speech. He was inviting people to join Islam. He was doing Hajj. He joined Al-Qaeda. He joined ISIS. And then ISIS, they kicked him out because they are out of business. And then he joined a Taliban. And then Taliban, they kicked him out because they are, you know, nobody buying drugs no more. And then he joined Hezbollah. And Hezbollah, they told him, do you have experience in drugs? He said, no. They said, we cannot hire you then. And the man, he suffered a lot. To make Allah happy. Yet he is almost one meter away from the door of heaven. And then what is written in the destiny take over and he start acting like people of people of hell and he go to hell. So what the point of believing in Islam? Muslims, what is the point of believing in this madness? If it doesn't matter what I do, at the end of the day, what Allah wrote for me is going to take over. And then Muhammad, he switched direction. I wish he stopped there. No, he want to do more, you know, Mimi, he cannot stop talking. When Mimi, you know, take the microphone, that's it. And another one, act in the way of the dissonance of hell. So this is the bad guy now. This is a guy who take a Christian and Jews as a friends. This is a guy who don't uh, do pray. This is the guy who don't do hajj. This is the guy who don't, uh, you know, support uh, Muslim Brotherhood, etc. Until there is remains between him and the hell a distance of a cubit. He is almost there in the door. Then the writing of destiny overcomes him. And then he began to act like people of paradise and he entered paradise. Look at this madness. The guy was doing shish kebab all his life. And then he's the lucky. He's the lucky. I mean, Allah, he wrote for him before he created him. You go to heaven. It doesn't matter what you do or your life. When you are a meter away, <laughs> you are almost there. Allah, destiny will make you do as Allah wrote for you. This is a religion. And this is why we found it very funny 
when the Sheikh uh, Mufti Mink he said it uh, Allah it's the indeed it is decree of Allah and he give you a choice <laughs> it's a decree of Allah and he give you a choice I mean how it's a decree of Allah and Allah give me a choice Well, do I mean do even those people using the are you using your brain? So why I want to say shahada? Why I want to believe in any religion? If this is a true, if this is a true, guys, that's mean it doesn't matter what you. I mean, you should nobody should believe in anything. I mean, just go like a, be hippie, you know, hippie, because at the end of the day. Before you arrive to the door of the gate of hell or the gate, the, the door of heaven, it doesn't matter what you did, what Allah wrote for you already. I mean, your name is written in the lotto, the one which is losing and the one it's, or, the, or the one it's winning. So what's the point of playing in the lotto? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> it's like going to the casino of Allah and then... You know, you play in the casino, but it's a predestiny if you will lose or if you will win. So what I'm not playing, it's Allah playing. This is this is literally the gambling of you. And actually, it's not even a gambling because in gambling, there is a choice. Maybe you will win. You might get lucky and win. With Allah, it is worse than gambling because it is made already. You have nothing, you know, you're just an, you're just an idiot. You know, and following Mimi. Uh, <clears throat> there is a hadith. I don't know if I can find it. Muhammad, he said, the one who don't believe in the destiny, the bad and the good, which Allah he decree for you, burn him with fire. But I don't know if I can find it. Let me see. <laughs> I don't think they will they will list this hadith in uh, in this website but let me search it maybe oh maybe we have it uh, no. Hmm. <laughs> no, not this one, not this one. <clears throat> okay, let's find it in different in, in Arabic and we will use Prophet Google piece upon him to translate. I mean what we can do. <clears throat> Um. Mm hmm. Okay, let's see this one here, this book. Uh, this is the book name Kitab al Qawl al Mufid ala Kitab al Tawheed. I don't know how I can translate to you. The book of the, the uh, beneficent statement in the book of Tawheed, which means the oneness, you know, of uh, supposedly Allah. Now let us look for the hadith because this page is very long. Here we go. Uh, now, if we use Google Translation, how we will find it? Let us see, try to find uh, the third, the, th the second, the first. Uh, this is hard. So here it says five, six. I'm just trying to find like, a, because you see the page is very long. So if I use Google Translation, okay, let's do this then. I will copy the text and post it in Google Translation. All right.
uh, and his statement he said <coughs> uh, let us copy here and reported from Abi Lahab Riwayat uh, Ibn Abu Lahab sorry قال رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم فمن لم يؤمن بالقدر وخيره وشره أحرقه الله بالنار this is one of the hadith so the one who don't believe actually is is it is not saying uh, you know I was like uh, I said I think I said uh, Muhammad he burned him no it is Allah who will burn him you know this hadith I I just remembered so Allah will burn him in fire if you don't believe in destiny so the second you don't believe in destiny you are not a Muslim anymore you, you know you are going to go to heaven you're to hell so if we go to Arabic all right a narration of etc and have messenger of Allah said that whoever does not believe in fate is uh, you know he will Allah will burn him in fire the translation is not too much coming he, uh, whoever don't believe in the fate the good and the bad of it you know because Allah he decides for you what bad will happen to you what good will happen to you if you don't believe in that Allah will burn you in fire guaranteed so it, it's a you know actually this is one of the basic belief in Islam you have to, to believe in the books of Allah the messenger of Allah uh, uh, Allah the, the day of judgment and you have to believe in the uh, the destiny uh, al -qadr, you know so for sure if you don't believe in this you are out of Islam guaranteed you know so when the Muslim they say trying to answer somebody about if Allah he knew the future why he is testing us in fact the word testing is stupid because he is not testing you based in everything we showed you anyone see testing you see testing if I have a choice to do or not to do even Muhammad by the way he said to the Muslims don't sit with those people who believe in a free will and don't even talk to them Don't sit with people of a free will and don't talk to them. It's even a big sin. Don't don't even get close to them. So when this guy here in this video, he said to us what he said, I mean, he is making fun of himself. He is making fun of Muslims. He is making fun of our brain. I don't know. He's making fun of who? But what he is saying is very silly and very, very naive. I wish we can get this guy in a debate. That would be fun. What do you think, guys? That would be fantastic. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala did not impose on us certain matters. He has given us a choice regarding. You are sitting here. It was in the knowledge of Allah. It was decreed by Allah indeed. But he gave you the capacity and the choice. <laughs> you know, each time, like I, when I hear it, you know, like I, I don't know, when we are here, Muslim talking, I feel like I just heard it first time, and I laugh from my heart. I mean, look at this madness. It's a decree of Allah, and Allah give you a choice. And then he continued talking, and he says, "Well, Allah will not judge you for you getting injured in an accident." Because it was the decree of Allah, but the second you say it's a decree of Allah for him to get injured, it means it was a decree for Allah to make the other person injure him. And as we just showed you, in Islam there is no test. What test? I mean, if Allah is saying to you, there is a distance between you, a, a, a distance of, uh, 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 you know, uh, a one cupid between you and heaven, and then what written by Allah will take over. So where is the test? What test we are talking about? In different hadith, which is explaining the Quran, look what Muhammad he said. <clears throat> people are about asking about what people do. Imran ibn Hussein told two men, etc. He said, Messenger of God, tell us whatever what man do today and strive over something. 
which has been destined for them and has previously been decreed for them or whether it is something their prophet has brought to them which they are encountered and which has become uh, bending upon them he replied saying no and here you will see Muhammad obviously is under the influence of hashish again it is something which has been destined for them and previously decreed for them the verification of that found in God book which he says by the soul and him who formed it and implemented or implanted its wickedness and its pity do you see it guys Allah he implanted inside you your wickedness it's already there he decide how wicked you will be and this is a verse from the Quran The Quran says, وَنَفْسٌ وَمَا سَوَّاهَا أَلْهَمَهَا فُجُورَهَا Let us open the verse. Look like today we don't have too many people. <coughs> In chapter 91, verse number 8. And look at the translation, guys, how different it is. Just to show you the, the comedy of Islam. Read with me the verse in here in this translation, Yusuf Ali. Then he showed him what is wrong for him and what is right for him. He showed him, it says that. Okay, let us go to the hadith and see the translation. Try not to laugh. Let us close some, close some pages, too many pages. All right. <clears throat> Read with me a translation here. I mean, this is the same verse. This is the same verse. By the soul and him who formed it and implanted its wickedness and its pity. This is the same verse. Actually, here it shows you the number of the verse. Here we go. The, the, the Quran. You see, it says Quran. This is Quran. And this is why Muhammad he says the verification of this found in God book. And this is the, exactly the same text. We go in the translation here, verse number seven and verse number eight. If you change the translator, a miraculous things will happen. This is Hilali Khan. Let us see a different translator. Let us see uh, Big Tal. Hmm. Look, look here. And inspire it with what? This is what the verse is saying. I mean, this is a hundred eighty degree different from the Hadith translation for the same verse. Let us see. Itani uh, uh, Allah. Huh? Here, there's different. Look how the Quran is changing. Alhamdulillah. And inspire it with wickedness and righteousness inspire it or it's a degree <laughs> so you notice how muhammad you know this is why i'm i'm actually i'm i'm very glad that we have the books of hadith because the books of hadith they expose the teaching the false teaching of muhammad the false mentality of muhammad the contradiction of muhammad the wickedness of muhammad the wickedness of a man is not from the man, it's from Allah. The real wicked is Allah, according to Muhammad. Because who is the one who put wickedness inside you? Allah.
That is wickedness. Isn't it wickedness that Allah, he made Adam commit sin and then he said to him, why you commit sin? Isn't it this is wickedness? Is it right? And let us show you some Sahih Hadith. Isn't it this is wickedness that you make me commit sin and you write my destiny 40 years before you, you, you created me and then you blame me for the sin I did? What's wrong with this man? His name is Muhammad. And remember here that Muhammad, he is stating that Adam, he have of necessity to commit sin. It's not his choice. So what the logic of the story of Adam then? What is the logic of the whole story? That God said to Adam, don't eat from the tree. Then Adam, he ate from the tree. If you are the one who made him eat from the tree anyway. You know what I mean? Do you blame me for an act Allah he ordained for me to do? So what is purpose of this story? Why Allah he said to Adam and Eve, okay, don't eat from this tree. What is that? What kind of a movie this movie is? I mean, American movie is 10 times better. John Wick and the wickedness of the movie is, you know, I mean, he, he, he is, what is that? I mean, the wickedness of Allah is really disgusting. This is wickedness. So you make people commit sin. You force them to commit sin. You play with their life and you ask them and you want them to ask you for forgiveness when the fact you are the one who made them do sin how that could be and then in different hadith he says that uh, uh, if there is no eve no woman betray her husband but as we see eve she was a part of the story which Adam he commits sin and he ate it from the tree, which means she herself she was forced to say every word to Adam. This is every word Eve she said to Adam was written for Eve to do because she is part of the plan. So, the first thing you notice when you start studying Islam slowly. And carefully that not only Islam is not logical Islam is stupid and the funny they say to us as an example Muslim they say to you so your God Jesus his father he sent him so if he die his father will forgive your sin no 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 we don't believe in this this is not the reason we believe in Jesus and God for God the Bible says for God he loved the world he sent his only begotten son to save us and we have a choice to accept or to refuse. So if God, he knew what they will do to him when he come, that doesn't mean that he made them kill him. Did Jesus go to the cross and say, hey, people, hang me. Hey, kill me, you kill me. I will force you to kill me. No. Actually, Jesus in the cross, he said, forgive them, Father. They do not know what they are doing. So if they've been forced to kill him, then why he is saying, forgive them, Father? You know what I mean? Uh, Mr. Muhammad Arif saying, Islam, he did a lot for the world. We will be 
grateful if you respect us, my friend. I don't I respect you as a human being, but Islam did not do, do anything good for the world. You see, the funny about Muslims, they will start quoting you for you some, like, let's just say, philosopher or a scientist. And they claim that they are Muslims. As example, Al Jabratu was made by Muslim. Al Jabratu or Al Jabra, if he exists, he was a Yazidi. Some they say he was a Christian. But anyone, the Muslim, they became famous, they will make him Muslim. The guy who used to dive, what his name, Captain Cousteau, they said after he died, they said he became a Muslim. All those names who the Muslims today are proud about them, they used to be kuffar and they used to run for their life. Ibn Khaldun, he said that the Arab, in order to cook, they are willing to burn a library. Go open the introduction of Ibn Khaldun, your, your famous philosopher. This is what the Arab did, and I am an Arab, when we came to Spain. So don't tell me that the world should appreciate what we did. What we did, all this propaganda is a joke. Every building, the Muslims, they build in any country. It is not them who build it. Muslims until now do not know how to build. If you go to the Middle East, you will see all jewelry store. They open, they close, they're, 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 they're off day. is Saturday and Sunday. Do you know why? Because the only one who knows how to make jewels is Christians and Jews. All the mosques in the Middle East are built by Christians. And the ancient churches, Muslims, they forced, they, 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 they took it because they cannot build the same. Why you wanna take Hagia Sophia? Build one. You cannot build one. Even now you cannot build one. So don't tell me the world appreciate us, you know, because of your religion, my friend, we cannot go to the airplane without waiting for three hours in the security check. Because of your religion, the price of airline ticket increased three, four times because somebody have to pay for the security. Because of your religion, we have to take our belt and we have to take our shoes and we have to take our stuff because of your religion. And then when you ask people to respect you, do you respect them? You call us kuffar, you call us infidel, you call us najis, you call us dirty, you force you wanna force us to pay jizya, you wanna humiliate us. You you know, I mean I mean you see the hypocrisy. You see the hypocrisy? Every big mosque in the Middle East, I'm talking about all buildings, or used to be a church. It doesn't matter what capital. Right? The U.S. letting Muslim to build a mosque in the middle of New York. So what? I mean, this is they say we are not against Muslim to build a mosque. That's not an issue. You know, we are against the teaching of Islam. They, you know, if we can make this mosque, uh, you know, uh, be empty, you know, you see, don't don't blame the Muslims for building a mosque. Don't be silly too. They, from their money, they build a mosque. What's your problem? Why they will not let them? There is no reason not to let them, but but, but they shall not let them teach hatred inside the mosque. So if this mosque start teaching kill the Christians and kill the Jews and etc., then that mosque will be closed in two minutes. My friend, Islam brought nothing to civilize. You know, I saw many programs. You know, even the Muslim are the one who discover Australia. I mean, it is it is amazing. Anyone he became famous. George Bernard Shaw, he, you know, uh, he said the prophet can solve any problem in 10 minutes when he's drinking coffee. And then we find, wait, where is the book of George Bernard Shaw saying that? We cannot find it. al Kazafi, he said, Shakespeare was Muslim. His real name is Sheikh Isper. Even Shakespeare, they made him a Muslim. In Tarfun, 
ذات شكسبير از ترو نيم از نات شكسبير شيك اصبر اند ذا وورد ديموكراسي هاف نوتين تو دو وذ امريكان اتس كامينغ فروم ذا ارابيك وورد ديموكراسي ويتش مين برينغ ذا تشيرز رسول القذافي واز سين رايت Uh, Muhammad Arif saying you are an Arab and and you are insulting your ethnic group you see how stupid you are the, the, the fact is you are not an Arab and you are speaking to me in Arabic using Google translation that is an insult to you you lost your dignity you became a slave for the Arab you changed your name to Arabic word you know you you eat Arab you dress Arab and your name is an Arab look at you Muhammad Arif and you are not an Arab You are the potato of the Arab. How your name became Muhammad Arif, you tell me. What happened? A person is born in Indonesia. How he became Muhammad Arif? We put you inside the microwave as an Indonesian. You came out as an Arab. But because you became a slave for the Arab, so... Go search right now about how Islam force what they call it Arabization. I don't know what they call it in English. So everybody will be an Arab at the end by obeying the Arab. Not they will not accept you as an Arab, by the way. Even 1,000 years from now, they will not because they are very racist. If you are a person who go to the Middle East and you are coming from Afghanistan, they will call you Afghani. They will not call you by your name because they are racist. Do you know what Afghani means? From Afghanistan. Bukhari, why they call him Bukhari? Because he's not Arab, so everybody should know that he is not an Arab. He's Bukhari from Bukhara. This is not his name. Very, very aggressive, racist cult. We are not force Arab your lie. <clears throat> okay, uh, guys, we are not force Arab your lie. Supposedly now he stopped using Google translation and he cut together something different. Do you like to call me Muhammad Arif? In the front of everybody. Either I can prove that you've been forced. And then people will see the truth or I can approve it and people will laugh at me what do you think <clears throat> do you like to call me <clears throat> do you You know, if you go in the Quran, are we going to find the word Indonesia? Are we going to find the word Asia? Are we going to find anything have to do anything except the Arab? We made the book, uh, if we search the word Arabic or Arab, how many times we find it and about what? Allah, he said to the Arab, Kuntum khayra ummatin ukhrijat linnas. You are the best people who brought to mankind. And what is the duty of those people who brought to mankind? They are the best. And best in what? Like technology maybe? We will see. The best of them is those, the Arab, who fight and bring all nations to Islam with the chain around their neck. Are you there? And you said we are not forced. Who is the one who made the invasion? Wasn't the Arab? Who is Umar al Khattab? Who is Abu Bakr? Who is his army? The verse it says, You true Muslims. 
are the best of people ever of mankind. By the way, it doesn't say the word Muslim. It says, Kuntum khayra ummatin ukhrijat linnas. Allah, which Aka Muhammad is speaking to the Arab around him. You are the best nation. And there is nothing but Arab around him. The rest are slaves. Meaning, the best of people for the people as you bring them to with a chain on their necks till they embrace Islam. And this kid saying to me, Oh, nobody force us. You won the argument, my friend. You destroyed me in two seconds. We keep our videos for a few hours or a day sometimes, sometimes two days. But you, my friend, don't ask me about the videos. If you care for the video, download it, share it with your friends, make a page. Uh, you, you can even an, open an account in YouTube. You can pause the videos and you don't. You can make them private if you want to save them so nobody flag them for you. So don't tell me what to do, what not to do. Do your part, I do my part. If you care for the videos, download it. All right? So, uh, until now, until now, the cult of Islam is harassing, going after Christians everywhere in the world. Until now, you will be arrested in Saudi Arabia for celebrating Christmas. You are not even doing anything. If they notice that you have, you have any kind of celebration of Christmas in your house, you will be arrested. If they heard that you pray with your friends before you eat in your house, Praying to Jesus, you will be arrested. In the best scenario, they will deport you from the country and you will lose all the money you, you made in your life, working there like a donkey. And during the time you are in jail, they will harass you as much as they can to make you share shahada. If you go and work in Qatar, you will see what they do to girls. Those poor girls like from Philippines and Indonesia and etc. She go to work in Qatar. The second day she arrived, they say to her, oh, or maybe they say, you know, a few weeks after, you know, we really don't need you, you know, like your contract. Um, we, we, we have to send you back. Why you send me back? I borrow money to come here to work. I took money for my family. You know, they are, you know, please, you know, etc. Poor girl. They say to her, well, you know, I don't really, I don't really know what to do, you know. Um, it's, it's not in my hand. We have to let you go. Please, I borrow money to come here. I did not even make money for the ticket. I did not do anything. I did not do anything wrong. I'm doing my job. And then he said to her, "Well, uh, there is a there is an employment assistant for Muslim sisters." But sadly, you are not Muslim, right? So they cannot help you because they can keep you having a visa and get a job if you were a Muslim. However, we will not let you go now. We will give you like a few days. Think about it. If you become a Muslim, we will keep your visa. Do you see? You see the evil? Go check those who work in Qatar. Go check who work in Qatar. And for sure, if this is happening in Qatar, imagine what will happen in Saudi Arabia. Imagine what will happen in other countries. This is why I feel sorry for anyone work in the Middle East anyway. Never work in the Middle East. For me, I believe that if you are Indonesian and you are poor, work in your country, sell sandwiches in the street, and never go and work in the Middle East, especially if you are a female. Especially if you are a female. Never go there. Find a job anywhere in the world. Never go to the Middle East. You will find those who they are looking for maids from Indonesia. The first thing they want to check how pretty she is. Because you will not be a maid. You know what you will be.
1,200 Indonesian girls were missing and in a point that even the Indonesian government which is run by Muslims they stop all kind of employment to go to Saudi Arabia because girls are dying and how they are missing what happened very simple they keep raping you and then you have a baby and then they want to get rid of you they kill you they throw you in the desert and then they report to the police that you took some jewels and you run away and since then we never know where are you and Saudi Arabia have a desert bigger than Europe <laughs> who will find you and who they will believe who you are the maid and they are the masters they are the citizen and you are the foreigner even if you are a Muslim it doesn't matter by the way you see they do that to even to Muslim girls Indonesian girls, most of them, they are Muslims who work as maid. They do that to Muslim girls. If you are an Indian, as an example, and you work in Saudi Arabia, they will put 40 of you in a small, tiny apartment, have no air condition. If you are an American, you will have a car, private apartment, good salary, health insurance because you're an American if you are an Indian oh boy oh boy they will make you sleep in the top of each other like shelves go right now and check human rights or employment and human rights in Qatar or Saudi Arabia go check it out And not to mention if you're black or you know I mean this is the land of discrimination you see my people they are they love to discriminate all of them even those who they are Arab Christians they discriminate too it's in the blood of the people there if you are poor if you don't have a big family, if you don't have a good last name, if you are not good looking, I mean discrimination, everything. This is the land of discrimination. There's nobody in the world discriminate as the Middle East. Nobody. If you don't have somebody powerful to support you, you will die like a rat. You will not even find a job. If you have a fight with somebody, the judge, one phone call, you go to jail and the one who did beat you, he have party. That is the Middle East. Anyway, I'm not talking, you see, I don't want to mix things up. As I said, discrimination can happen even there are some people who claim to be Christian and they discriminate people too. But when it's come to Islam, Islam make discrimination part of their belief as you see in front of you just because they are muslim they are the best nation and because they are the best nation which means they are muslims they have the right to bring you with the chain around your neck in islam if a muslim he killed a muslim and just killing he will be killed but if a muslim he killed non-muslim unjustly he will not be killed the price of killing a Christian is half a price of a Muslim. Muslim, they believe in something called the blood price, which means you kill somebody if you are rich, you go to his family, you say, hey, come on, I will give you a million dollar. I mean, just a number, whatever it is. Ten thousand dollars, depend like who is the person. If they agree, you don't, there's no punishment, that's it, you are free. Can you believe justice? What kind of justice this justice is? So if you are a, if you are a rich man, you can shoot as many as you want. And because those people, they are very poor and they cannot fight this guy because obviously if his son get killed and he's rich, I mean, you imagine what will happen to them after. So we will accept the money. What is justice? Islam is religion of in, you know, unjust, unjust, even with, with not only with the Christians, 
you know, discriminate Christian, discriminate Jew, discriminate everybody. But even with Muslims, there is no just. Somebody, uh, he's saying to me, don't lie. Let me show you the just of Muhammad so you can laugh for a second. <clears throat> I challenge any Muslim to call us and read it so we can laugh. In the case of murder, <laughs> Muhammad he heard that Musas have a, have a law and the law says eye for an eye. So the smart Muhammad, he decided to practice eye for an eye. But this is how Muhammad, how Muhammad he understand it, Mr. Mimi. So he said, Oh, who you believe in retaliation for the murder is or denied upon you. The free for the free. Like what? The slave for the slave. What? The female for the female. Like what? So if a free man, he kill a slave, a free man will not be killed. <laughs> if a white Arab man, he killed an Ethiopian or African, the white Arab man will not be killed for killing a slave. Do you see it? This is Quran. Do you see it? It's in the front of you. And if you don't believe me, open the interpretation and read. This is eye for an eye. And then the Muslims, they get smarter. They say, ACP, later the Prophet, he canceled it, he canceled it. It's abrogated. Okay, why he canceled? Because people, they start laughing at him. I mean, isn't it God? This is this is a law of murder. Even this one, you want to change it? Was it just? Wasn't or no, it's not just? <laughs> women for the women. What kind of justice the justice is? So if you kill my wife, I kill your wife. What now? We have two victims: your wife and my wife, and the killers are having fun. <laughs> Which is this? If I kill your slave, you kill my slave. So now we have two poor slaves are dead and the two white men are having fun. Party, let's have beer. Okay, you kill my slave, I kill your slave. We are fine now. Are we done? Shake hands. This is justice? If this is justice, stupidity is what? And this is not eye for an eye. Eye for an eye. If somebody kills somebody, he will be killed. That's an eye for an eye. But we will not kill his, you know, slave. I will not kill his wife. I mean, this is not about war, by the way. This is about murder. In war, things can happen, like army fighting army, you know, etc. But this is just two people from the same town, and they are Muslims. What is this? And this is why I believe from my heart that discrimination is from the devil. Anyone he discriminates, like me, myself, I will never discriminate a Muslim. Because if I do that to him, let us say I am in charge of a company or etc. If I do that, I know but I'm no better than the evil one I'm speaking against. Never do discriminate. For the second you do that, you are evil. The Lord, he said, from their fruits, you shall know them. And discrimination is nothing but the fruit of the devil. You discriminate a person because he's black, you are evil by doing that. You discriminate a person because whatever, even if maybe you are black, discriminate white people. You know, there's people who do that, you know. Whoever do discrimination, he is serving the devil, not God. That's why the Bible says clearly, for God, he loved the world, not the white people, not the black people, not the, the Asian people, all the world, the, all of us, including the Muslims, whatever their color is. He did not love only the Christians. He loved the world. And then who want to hate him, this is his business. And then to, don't worry, God, he will do justice, not you. 
we will not go against the one and like I say start killing and doing violence against the one who don't believe in God and the one who is no if you believe that God is almighty let God almighty do what is right you know one actually uh, one of the things make me not to associate much with Middle Eastern is discrimination you know Middle Eastern I don't like to associate with them doesn't matter if they are Christians or Muslims doesn't matter uh, you see the word minority minority Christians I believe I believe we are blessed as minority. As an example, you said minority Christians in Indonesia. How many minority we are? How many millions in Indonesia they are minority? What what the number of the Christians in Indonesia? <clears throat> Somebody can tell me? I think it's taking some time for the sound to come to you. Because my understanding of minority is different from the way they understand it, you know? I believe being a minority is a blessing. It will make you a better believer. When you are in a majority country and you are not discriminated, you are just a Christian by name mostly. around 25 to 30 million Christians in Indonesia. That's not minority, that can make a country. That can make three countries. <laughs> so my friend, minority, you see, when Jesus was on earth and he had a 12 disciple, was he a minority? No. Were they minority? No. So minority as numbers, yes, but minority as believers, no. So it's not the number who will make you minority. It is how minor you are. So they can discriminate us, but that is work in the opposite direction. Maybe if I'm not born in the Middle East, I will not be who I am, you know, I will not be talking about Islam. I am, I can say to you that what I am doing because of what they did, because of what they did to the Christians, because of what they do to the Christians, because the way they discriminate the Christians. This is one major reason for me to be here talking to you. Otherwise, I would be maybe watching movie now. So I'm not really worried about discrimination. For first, you get your reward from the Lord. The Lord, he says, time will come and people will think by killing you, they are doing favor to God. Which God? Their God. Whoever that God is. And the Lord, he said, fear not those who destroy your body, your flesh, but those who destroy your soil. So you are minority if your soil is destroyed. You are majority if your soil is strong. And then the majority will fear you. And this is why the majority in Islamic countries, they fear the Christians, even though they have no army, they have no weapon, they have no power, they have nothing. They are afraid of the God they believe in. They are afraid of the book of the God they believe in. That's why they fight the book. They can do they, what, what they would do. They would do more than the Roman. They, they did more than the Roman. But still, Christianity is growing in the heart of Arabia. You see, I saw uh, on the other day a study saying that soon in China, we will have more Christians than more than USA and Canada together in a few years, maybe three or four years in China. And China is going to come or become the biggest Christian country in the world. And guess what? The Christians in China are not a normal believers, are really, really strong in belief. 
So time will come and we will wake up in the morning and we will find a Christian president in China taking his oath on the Bible and the Christians will be free. If you go right now and search for a church in China, you will not believe it. Last time I arrived to China, the day I arrived, they destroy a huge church. They think, the same as the Muslim, you know, they do to us in the Middle East. If you do that, uh, Christianity will stop. That's it, you fight Christianity. The fact it's the opposite. So they destroy a church can fit like for, I don't know, 20,000 people, etc. I mean, a huge church, mega. Uh, look, this is just, this is just July 27, I just searched, destroying church. This is this year, July 27. You know, destroying churches everywhere. Okay, taking cross from the churches and they replace it with the communist sign in the top of the church. By the way, Trump, he did not complain about China doing that. He complained about China discriminating Muslims. This is why I don't like this idiot. I mean, hypocrite. He claimed that he is against China. Okay, no problem. You want to defend the Muslims? Defend the Muslims. If they are discriminating them. What about the Christians? He never mentioned the word the Christians. So they are destroying churches, they are arresting people, tens of thousands in jail, and their crime, you see, Islamic territory, they have, China can make any excuse because there is terror organization, there is terror uh, uh, attack, there's, but the Christian never did anything. So what they excuse? Very simple, they are not communist. Why you destroy their churches? Why you are taking the cross and hanging the sign of, of, uh, of uh, the communist? Why you are burning the cross? After all what they do, <laughs> it works in the opposite way. The church you destroy, and instead of people meeting the church, now they spread by tens of thousands in the roads, and they will bring more people to Christ. And this is why Christianity in China is growing like, I mean, unbelievable. Okay, Fugly, we pray for you, my friend. Pray to our friend there, he is sick, or she is sick, I'm not sure it's a male or female. We pray for anyone who need help. Pray from your heart to the Lord, so he help you. And... Even if you are sick, by the way, like you mentioned, you are sick. I believe that even sickness can be a blessing. Because sometimes we are far from God and our sickness make us get closer. You know, human being is a, is a very arrogant, you know, like when he is healthy, he forget about God. People, they remember God usually when they are needy. You know what I mean? When they are needy. Don't be like that. Remember God when you do not need. For sure, I'm not wishing anyone to get sick. But even being sick can be an opportunity to get close to God. For many of us, we forgot about him. Because we don't need him when we are healthy we don't say oh god help me we don't say oh god i need please let this happen i want it i need this job please god help me you remember god only when you need a job only when you want something only when you want success what about remember god all the time so god can remember you always Imagine you have a children's 
And those children, they call you only when they need money or they need help. Hey, dad. Oh, okay. Now you're calling me. Where you been? But in the same time, the Lord is nothing but love. Even if you are a person that did not call him for long, still always he said, knock at my door, I will open for you. So don't hesitate, my friend, for he is a merciful and he loves you. Even if you were, let us say, a, you know, a person who forgot about him for long, still the door is open. But the door will not be open forever. I mean, there's time when the door of the grave will come and will be open. At that moment, there's no door is open except the door of the one you know. And you know, people before they... Uh, like, I find it funny. That's... Uh, people, they build nice marble grave. You know before they die <laughs> they buy a piece of land and bury me here you know and i want this design and put this uh, point in my uh, you know etc i mean for my friend the grave is a grave it doesn't matter what what kind of marble you put in the top it's a grave i mean what think about what is beyond don't worry about your grave anyway guys I think we have a good time together today. Uh, uh, we pray. We pray that the Lord uh, will open the heart of people. We pray that the Lord, He will show His mercy to the Muslims, even the aggressive one. Uh, we pray that God Almighty will have mercy in the poor people around the world especially those who suffer because of this corona. People lost their jobs. I feel really bad for them. Uh, you know, people who they are, they have money. I mean, they can stay home and they can do nothing. It's okay, they have money. But there is people, they have a children to feed. There is people, they have uh, bills to pay. They have, I mean, they lost everything. I wonder actually how people, they make it in those countries. Very, very, you know, very sad. So I pray that this is, will be over soon. But in the same time, what happened should be, must be a warning for us that if you think that you are, you know, uh, uh, what you have today is going to be there for granted tomorrow, think again. Think again. Here we go, Corona come. Even the major companies in the world, they are going bankrupt. Airlines are shutting down. Airports are dead. Hotels, five stars, they spend billions to build hotels and it's zero, empty. Just because of a little tiny virus. So what will happen if we have a new war? What will happen if we have a very aggressive virus? What will happen if mistakenly a nuke from the large ones explode? What will happen? Think about it. And if you think you live in the, like, you know, I see people, they say, we want to live off a grid. I mean, <laughs> you're funny. What off a grid, my friend? When, when the, what is called the city in Japan, when uh, the, the reactor for the, you know, the nuclear facility hit by the earthquake, that by tsunami, the radiation, the water, from the radiation came all the way to the shores here in USA to Canada to Europe and this is was in Japan it happened where in Japan so if you think you are safe if you think you are far if you think you are protected you are not you are not this earth can be over in in a minute in a minute if one of those crazy guys who have the, the big weapon decide to go in war, this earth is over. Because the war now is not going to be like war in the time of Hitler. It's going to be totally different. And those people don't care. It's just a push of a bomb and him and his wife will, and his family, they will be under the ground in a very safe area and let the whole earth die.
so we pray for peace we pray for health and the more we corrupt this earth the more the bad will happen to us as fast as we do it uh, anyway I don't want you to feel bad you know I mean God is good uh, but you know always remember what happened uh, with this uh, you know coronavirus it can happen again with something way more aggressive you know like in Africa nobody noticed what happened to Africa with Ebola I mean some countries they lost a lot of people and I'm not sure really why this Ebola did not spread all over the world you know I don't know something really weird about it but this Ebola was really bad very bad so if we have if the world have international virus like this Ebola something maybe, maybe even more aggressive then you can imagine what will happen in this earth how many tons of millions will die right now we have a million something but not long time ago more than a hundred million I think it was maybe 90 years ago more than a half of the population of England die because of a virus you know so you can imagine anyway uh, I hope we have a good uh, sharing with you today uh, please don't forget to download the video share it with your friends and you can always cut the video like this topics like, like we spoke about Islam you can cut the video take that part put it in the channel if you want I mean there's no need to put everything because the video is long just make it the topic wherever the topic is and feel free to use my videos it's free for everybody uh, yet don't claim that it's you it's me you know don't do identity theft don't claim it's me who was on in the channel there just tell people this is from a Christian prince and this is his major or uh, uh, the link you can watch his live video and with this I want to say thank you all for being here may the Lord bless you and uh, we see you again soon maybe tomorrow God is willing I say God bless and take care of yourself pray for others be merciful be loving be giving and those who they are like this God he would take care of them me myself I went through many things in my life and the Lord he take care of me he do just give your heart to the Lord even your heart is a sinner I am a sinner don't think I am an angel coming from over the cloud with the blue clothing no even if you are a sinner just be a, a believer a truthful confess your sin and tell the Lord I'm fighting my sin I will be better I want to be better I want to fight it work in that direction and at least don't adopt sin don't make it the way to live try to fight it try to correct yourself try to get better it's like you know being sick and then you want to fight a sickness you have sometimes you fail sometimes you don't but inside you you always should be against the wrong be against the wrong love each other love the Muslims even they are aggressive against us even if their book teach hate against us still we will not be people of hate may the Lord bless you Christ is Lord and see you soon again take care bye bye